howdy doody friends welcome back to my floor <laughs> i don't know why i said that that way but <laughs> Shall we just roll with it? The footage that you're about to see from the art projects that I worked on this week are all from the past because I originally filmed my intro to this video and then when I moved the file from my phone to the computer, the file got corrupted, so I'm here from the future! <laughs> <laughs> recapping everything that I've already done over the past week and it was a very fun art project. It wasn't intended on actually being an art challenge but I guess it kind of was an art challenge just by design and it turned out to be kind of fun and interesting anyway but you'll learn the process of what I was doing and all of the weird hoops I had to jump through shortly of course but if you read the title of the video yes I completed some works of art using coffee and uh, there were quite a few of them. I'm not gonna summarize everything, I'm just gonna show you what I did, have fun, and I'll see you on the other side. As you can see, I have continued some of my test samples here. I keep trying to layer, but unfortunately because of how wet my washes have to be, you know, because it's not paint, it's just liquid. This paper isn't terribly absorbent, so it just kind of sits on top of the paper before it dries, and as a result, some of my layer samples kind of like start bleeding together. Let's see if I can try to put another bit of coffee down. You might have to layer a lot with the coffee in order to get it super dark. So I think that that means that this is going to take a really long time for me to complete. I have begun a little doodle here of um, a lady's face, which I'm trying to add in very gradual layers over time. I also started a little rose over on that side. And also I'm still kind of fighting this paper because it's not the best quality in the world. It just doesn't have the absorbency that you would need out of a project like this. And also does that unsightly thing where if you put a really wet wash of anything down, uh, because it doesn't absorb straight into the paper and kind of sits pulled on top of it, it becomes darker around the edges. So that could cause some difficulty. Now I do have some samples of different watercolor paper that I could use for this. That could be interesting if I could just test it out on a different paper to see if it does anything a little bit better than it does in this book. These are just some, just some doodles. Okay, so my first painting was of course in my sketchbook. I didn't have high hopes for the performance of the paper for this project, but I wanted to give it a fair shot anyway, and my sketchbook is technically where I default to when I start doing these projects, or at least that's the habit that I've built up. So I just began and got to work and started doing a lot of layering. Now what you don't see in this speed paint video is the times where I paused the video and sat back and waited long stretches of time for those layers to dry. When you're painting with liquid, you kind of have to wait for all those sloppy washes to get completely dried before you add more. And as a result, I ended up taking well over two hours to complete this painting. I couldn't get my values dark enough. It was getting really frustrating. Um, it definitely made those hard edges around the washes that I don't care for very much. And though I did my best, I ended up saving this picture as well as I could by coming back at the end with a Micron Pigma sepia toned uh, brush pen, I think, and just kind of defining all of the features of the face that I could not get with any depth of color from the coffee itself. All right, I'm back. This is the painting that I managed to do. It kind of turned more into a pen illustration towards the end because I just couldn't get my values dark enough. I was overworking my paper. Now it didn't turn out half bad. I think I worked with a large enough portrait here in this book that I could actually get some variances of value. It's just that I was really fighting the paper. I say this all the time about this book and it's something that I hope to remedy in the future because I feel like it's <laughs> it's almost unfair to my viewership here on YouTube that I'm doing all of these art projects in watercolor on paper that just isn't that friendly to watercolor despite what it said when I purchased the sketchbook. I do have some other paper in my stash and I thought we could try again because I still have some coffee left. I have a lot of it actually, I didn't really use very much. The one thing I do have to say though 
is that the paper smells really good now. <laughs> I used a, um, a decaf coffee, the only decaf coffee that I had in my cabinets, and it's French vanilla flavor. So it's just made the entire page smell like French vanilla coffee, and that is wonderful. <laughs> I'm quite a fan. <laughs> if only all of my watercolor paintings came with a smell, and I don't know how long that smell will stick around, but for right now, it's lovely. <laughs> Time for me to take a little break, and I'm gonna come back with some of the other paper that I have, and we'll see if we can get better results on a sheet of 100% cotton watercolor paper, because I know I have one of those in my sample pack. Okay, painting number two. I started with an illustration that I did of a very quirky character who had a coffee cup for a head, and I had this idea of her sort of leaning to one side very coyly and having the coffee in her head sort of spilling out over the edges. I really liked that as an illustration, and I began painting it on this half sheet that I had cut off of Arteza watercolor paper, which was 100% cotton that I received from my friend Maria. I'll put a link up into the cards if you want to see me praising her for sending me a whole bunch of samples of really good watercolor paper for me to try, and I decided to use this one. And it performed remarkably well. I mean, considering that drip coffee is essentially liquid and I ended up not really getting the kind of depth that I wanted anyway and overworking this paper as well, I would say it performed the best out of all of the papers that I chose to use, but I just couldn't get the depth of color that I wanted. No matter how many layers I put down, it just wasn't working. Oddly enough, when I put down those layers, if I had shading that I had already put down from previous layers, those would get washed out. You'll also see me whip out a hair dryer because I absolutely refuse to wait as long as I did for the previous painting for my layers to dry, and it became a very critical tool for me that I ended up using it a lot in this painting and in the paintings that you're going to see coming up. I also used the Micron pen for this illustration as well to outline the features just because it wasn't working out with the drip coffee and I wanted it to look halfway decent. After trying and failing twice now to get the result that I wanted, I had to get inventive. The only solution to not having dark enough coffee. Boil to reduce? Question mark? I managed to reduce my coffee down by half the volume. You can kind of see where the original top line of the coffee was. And now it's way down there and it still smells good, but I'm gonna try painting with this and see if I can get some darker values. I don't know if this is just a lost cause at this point. I am trying so hard not to take a sip of this because not only is it really old, it's now super strong. <laughs> that would be disgusting. I came back with the reduced coffee and tried to deepen up my shadows and just get as much color onto that page as possible. And I did my best, but you know, I refuse to admit defeat, so I decided to do an entirely new painting, and this time I cut a half sheet of a different brand of paper, this time Art and Fly. I have no idea what the cotton content is of this particular paper at the time of me recording this voiceover, but I will put it up on screen once I research it later. And unfortunately, I just did not like the way that this paper performed at all. I would say it was either comparable to the paper that's in my watercolor sketchbook by Moleskin, or just worse, because it ended up turning out so splotchy. In fact, I found it so unsightly that I knew not even halfway through this piece that I was going to end up bringing back those micron pens again just so that I had an opportunity to save it because a lot of the content of the coffee that I put down just wasn't staying put and was either creating these horrible splotches on the outside of my washes or would just outright bleed and you can see that on her left ear there there is a bleed that just starts traveling and every once in a while I'll try mopping it up with a brush which was driving me insane. So I did what I could. I cleaned it up as much as I could with the micron pens and up until this point I was about to admit defeat. Okay I just came back from the kitchen and I made a cup of tea which is right here. And as you can see, it is a bright red hibiscus tea. It's actually a lemon zinger, so it smells very citrusy. And I'm gonna try to use it on the background of 
one or both of my coffee paintings just to kind of give a different color, maybe. I'm not sure. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm, I'm hoping because of the bright red color that it will actually give some visual interest and maybe cover up some of the parts that bled on the outside of that painting, especially the, the portrait one, so. We're on day three of this project. I can't believe I did it, but I ran to the corner store earlier because I had to get something, and I saw that they had instant coffee for sale there, so I picked up a little bottle of it. And I decided that because I haven't been getting any kind of good result from the regular brewed coffee, even after reducing it over the stove, I just couldn't get it dark enough. I thought that I would just brew extra, extra, extra strong instant coffee. And I have returned from the kitchen and ugh. on the bottle it said that you want to mix like a teaspoon per eight ounce cup or something. Well, this is just like this much liquid and I'm pretty sure there's like two and a half tablespoons in here. I don't know. I basically eyeballed it. But dang it, I'm determined to get some better color, <laughs> some better depth of color out of coffee. Oh, and then just to update you on the addition that I added of that bright red hibiscus tea that I decided to use on the background of these paintings. I managed to cover up some of the bleed spots on the sides of each of these two paintings that I thought were a little unsightly and needed some correction, but that bright red tea turns out a little bit gray. You can tell that it's still got some red in it. It's more of like a purpley gray, especially when you layer it on thick like I did on this one, but it's definitely just gray on the background of this one. They don't look half bad. In fact, I'm really enjoying how this one turned out. I'm too determined to make this work. I, I just want it to look right. <laughs> Dang it, I'm gonna make it look right. The instant coffee ended up being a godsend, so much so that I used it on all three paintings that I had done thus far. And because I was getting such good results with it, I decided that I wanted to do a fourth painting. I was determined to do a painting that I didn't need to save with pen. I drew a man's face, I started layering down. I first started actually with a watered down version of the instant coffee because from my previous paintings experiences, I learned that you kind of have to go from light to dark the way you would with ordinary watercolor. Otherwise you risk getting rid of the layers that you had already put down because coffee doesn't have as much staining power as you think it would, even if it's instant coffee. And I just kept going until the values got deep and dark enough. In fact, I found a little trick that got me my deepest possible values with the instant coffee, and that was waiting until the very end, tipping the coffee cup so that I could see that thin layer of nasty instant coffee mud at the bottom, scraping it up with the brush, and then painting down the very darkest values in this piece, and it ended up turning out really dang cool. And then I brewed yet another hibiscus tea, this time a raspberry zinger, which is a tea that I'm not actually quite fond of drinking, so I decided to sacrifice it to do the background, hoping that I would get a very similar color effect that I did with my previous paintings. And this one actually turned out a little bit pinker and looked way cool. I think that this painting, out of all four of them, ended up being my greatest success. Here we have it, everyone my four completed artworks using coffee and select varieties of tea. <laughs> we start with the one from my sketchbook, which I managed to salvage a little bit with the instant coffee, as well as these two, which I managed to salvage with the instant coffee, both with the lemon zinger hibiscus tea used in the background in various amounts of layering, this one heavier of course, and then this one which was the final piece, this fellow here who I think turned out pretty dang cool, and I didn't have to save this one with pen, yay! <laughs> and I'm actually super proud of how this one came out even if this fellow's look turned pretty intense. <laughs> I'm also so much a fan of how purpley the background came out 
by using the raspberry zinger tea. I think it was the berry additives from that tea that ended up bringing out the rosy color from that specific blend of herbal tea. And I'm so much a fan of how it contrasts to the brown of the coffee, just as I was when I did it on this picture. It's just so much more saturated and pronounced and it applied so much better on this paper. And this was the Fabriano Studio paper, which was oddly enough a 25% cotton paper and performed a lot better, I would say, than this Art and Fly paper. Now, the star of the show, I think, is of course this one. It's the quirkiest drawing. <laughs> um, I really like the way it came out. I'm actually kind of a fan of the final product, including with the pen. Um, I don't consider that one so much a failure as just a workaround, and I am just so fond of how eccentric it is. So this one's of course my favorite, and it was on the best type of paper that I used, so the applications of coffee turned out a lot smoother, my blends were a lot smoother, and it was just fun to do something a little less traditional, a little bit more illustrative. But my goodness, what a cool collection of coffee and tea artwork. Hi again. <laughs> You recognize me, right? I'm the Serena from the beginning of the video. <laughs> this was a really cool art challenge. I didn't expect it to become so involved or take me so long to do, but that's just art for you, isn't it? Sometimes you don't realize how dedicated you are to getting something right until you just sit down and do it. Sometimes it takes you several days. I am proud of these though, and I'm gonna have to find either a way to display them or store them, other than the one in my sketchbook, of course, which will just live there forever. They're all charming in their own way, and I'm really glad that I did it. In fact, I was such a fan of, um, this is from the lemon zinger hibiscus tea. I just sort of like splodged it <laughs> on the side of my watercolor sketchbook. And I'm probably going to use this as a background for probably gouache. I think gouache would actually go over this rather well so that I can put an illustration over it because I was just fond of like the very natural color that it gave off and I don't know. I like how when you layer it, uh, specifically the lemon one because of the weird variances of grays that you can get because sometimes it looks more pink and other times it looks more like green. I'm not sure if that's the citrus element that causes that. I'm not really sure, but it just looked so cool. So I decided to use it as a backdrop for probably a cool little painting that I'll end up putting over it at a later date. With that, I wish you a very good evening. Thank you for joining me this week. Like, comment, subscribe, etc., and so forth. I will see you in my next video. And until then, ciao everybody gratuitous shot of Pixel. Since she didn't get to be in last week's video. Can you say bye-bye to the people? So sweet. <laughs>